But anyway, it, it, it uh, was a bit of a shocker. And uh, I, I never did have an incident like that. But coming back from uh, Damataru, uh, we, I suppose, were about uh, 100 or so miles south on uh, uh, the way to a place called Josh, J-O-S, uh, which I thought initially, when I was first told about it, was just a little place up on the plateau, as they put it. Well, <laughs> Josh has got six million people, uh, and it's had its share of troubles as well. But we came around a corner, and there was a, a, a barricade, uh, men with, with rifles and uh, and so on, and uh, there a couple in military uniform, and they put up their hands. And uh, my African colleague looked at the driver, who knew the area very well. He nodded, and uh, the, the chap just drove straight through, uh, pushing the barriers down. And it was explained to me later that these were bandits and that they uh, they were able to, or our local chap was able to recognise the real thing from uh, the fakes and that these had been fakes uh, and away we went. So that uh, is sort of exciting. Uh, but anyway, uh, front, front line journalism uh, can be a bit, uh, a bit dicey and um, I, I do uh, feel for those people who... Uh, are brave enough to go into Syria and go into Somalia uh, and so on. Would I still do it? I don't know. Just because you've done something in the past when you can sprint, uh, you know, now I'm 79, sprinting is, is something that I can remember doing. In fact, there, there is a photograph which I put on my Facebook page taken from the yearbook, my, my university yearbook, in which I'm sprinting. So I knew that I can, I could do it one time, whether I have short-term memory loss or not. Uh, but... Uh, um, uh, no, I, I, I think probably those days have gone for me. Uh, and uh, I say that because if somebody turned around and made an invitation tomorrow, I know I would be very, very tugged uh, and want to go. But, you know, perhaps, perhaps, Mr. Keith Hayes, you're just a bit too old uh, to do that sort of thing. Better to take on verbally some of the things like the, the, the councils and the train companies, and for that matter, big companies, because big companies have uh, something in common with the councils is that they, they, they bully and uh, uh, the, the, the train company has been no different in that respect it, uh, it, it bullies and it's certainly bullying it's uh, it, it, uh, well you know they, they both share the same thing is silly PR they think if they use pretty words it's alright but they, they both uh, um, bully uh, the client right and the client is actually the passenger for God's sake it's, it's the client <laughs> it's all right. There aren't any conductors on board or guards. <laughs> They're now on on board supervisors. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it makes you weep, doesn't it? Uh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, both the, the, the trains and and the council uh, make me laugh. And if there's one thing that can send me into hysterics, it's looking at the. I, I got one again yesterday. Another letter from the council, which contradicted the first three that I got a week or ten days ago, and which I've got now to, to, to make a reply sometime today. <laughs> but, uh, you, you know, you must stump up X customer first. <laughs> if there's one thing that the local council doesn't worry about, is it, it's the electorate, the, the voter, who they've now decided to call the customer. Customer first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play something. I'm gonna have hysterics if I keep this up. Oh, uh, uh, let, let, let's play Easy Saturday. <laughs>
Well, that did sound like Easy Saturday. And whether you notice the violin in, in the middle of that, it's beautiful. A really, really uh, uh, beautifully played, and uh, the sound is magnificent in uh, the context of uh, one of those things are going boing, boing, boing. Uh, anyway, uh, let, let's just... Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go back and, and, and twist the tail of the district council or even the train companies this morning, uh, so I just want to turn to the, 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 the banks. The banks have got to start to rethink the way they operate. I am sorry, bankers, you may think that computers handle everything very nicely for you. Well, in some ways, they do. In some ways, they can make banking very easy. But what they don't have is they don't have any flexibility. I went down to my bank yesterday because I needed to talk about I, I, I was expecting some funds in and uh, they may be stretched a little. And uh, the people there, absolutely charming. As a young man who is always very helpful, but he has no authority to do anything. And uh, when, in fact, uh, I, we looked at, at when I could see somebody with authority, is uh, uh, there was somebody coming in on Friday, uh, but they were booked up all day. And next Monday. Now, possibly somebody would uh, break an appointment or... Or perhaps uh, they, they, one would be shorter and uh, they could squeeze me in and give me a call and I could rush down. That, that's hardly efficient. Uh, it, it's not very good practice at all. First of all, you don't have enough people because you're so busy letting the computers run the banks. And uh, uh, secondly, uh, you don't have uh, um, people in authority who can actually bend the rules. In the old days, you could go in and a bank manager was using the computer to help him understand your account, understand what the bank wanted, and so on and so forth. But he had the authority to make a decision. And it appears that there are very few people now, and even if they have got the authority, it is they're not there. There's nobody in attendance. So if you've got a, a crisis, it's tough. <laughs> he don't, don't ask us to help you out. <laughs> the computer won't allow us to. Uh, and it, it really is sad. Uh, but I also... I have to say that I think that the government is at fault here. According to the statistics put out by the EU, 80% of the EU economy is founded on SMEs, that's small to medium enterprises. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily just the local shopkeeper. I mean, Harvey's in uh, Lewis would be considered an SME. Um, its turnover is okay. It, it's, it's a pretty healthy company, but it only has X number of employees, so it would be considered to, to be an SME. So it can go from that sort of size uh, down to me uh, without any employers, what employees whatsoever, uh, and uh, with um, with not many assets either. Uh, so it, it is a wide range. But those are the people that are the backbone of the EU. Do our governors? The people who, who, who govern us, our MPs, our civil servants, take account of that? No, they do not. Because when it comes to banks, they are as intractable as the bank. They simply do not understand what being in business, what being a freelance, uh, what, what being an independent is all about. It, it's rigid. Oh, I'm sorry. You, you've got a standing order, not a standing order, they're a bit more flexible. But you've got a, a, a direct debit in place. If it's not paid today by 2.30, we're going to send it back. And they do. And and the people that are going to pay you, pay in at 5 o'clock, not the same day. Wasn't in by 2.30. Boom. Now, it's that sort of inflexibility. Oh, by the way, they cost you 12 quid as well. <laughs> it's, that sort of inflexibility is just, just ridiculous. Uh, it's particularly ridiculous because this government has been urging young people coming out of school to be entrepreneurs. Now, some will make it, but others will find just how tough it is. And I've been in, independent, if you like, for many, many, many years, and I've had my failures and I've had my problems, and I've sometimes wondered where the next crust is coming from. And that's all part of the game. I sort of enjoy it. I just mean to say I don't get upset when 
somebody doesn't pay me or I can't pay somebody. But I, I sort of enjoy the hurly-burly of that life. But it is a tough life. And you sometimes have to wake up with the pit in your stomach wondering whether, in fact, you're going to be able to uh, pay anybody that day. The, the bank, a creditor, uh, even the supermarket. If you're not that tough, if you don't have that approach to both life and to business, then you're in trouble. But do the government, do governments try to help with uh, flexible ways of working? No, they do not. And they have failed bitterly, deeply, desperately, whatever word I want, they have failed the sector that I'm in, and that is the independent entrepreneur. They have failed us. And until they decide to come to grips with that, as along with a lot of other things, <laughs> transport for one thing, I mean, I understand that Chris Grayling is on shaky ground he's in a new government he's not likely to have, have his uh, Department of Transport portfolio <laughs> and, I, uh, and I hope not he doesn't seem to know what the hell's going on at any time and anyway he, he goes to places uh, around the world where the signal doesn't work <laughs> so he can't be got hold of and then he can come back and say well, I didn't know that <laughs> I'm sorry that was almost a libel <laughs> Mr Grayling I don't know that he does that at all <laughs> but he just seems like that because whenever he's interviewed he doesn't seem to know what's going on uh, I mean for instance he thinks that uh, Southern is a uh, the, the, is a, an efficient company <laughs> despite the fact that his local MP has, has, has been sending in petitions and all sorts of things Maria Caulfield has ta taken up the cudgel on that one <laughs> and, and we have from Mr Grayley that, uh, uh, that Southern is a, an efficient company uh, right okay I've been going 28 minutes now and it's 6.33 because we started a little bit late uh, so I think I really have to say uh, toodle pip um and uh, some of the things that I've raised, hopefully, uh, we'll, we'll be able to debate even more as uh, people recognise there's a focal point for getting upset with a lot of our institutions. And our institutions really uh, need to look at themselves uh, because if we're not careful, uh, uh, we're, going to, uh, we're going to run into a lot of problems. Hey, very well. Um, this is Keith Hayes with... Rouser Radio, broadcasting out of Lewis, East Sussex, UK, but with a good feeling of link to Lewis, East Sussex, or I think possibly they say Sussex East, in Delaware, in the United States, a delightful little town, a lovely little town. If you're going out there, forget Vegas, forget New York, go down to Lewis, Delaware gorgeous little place. Great history with pirates, by the way. <laughs> it's a, a kid, uh, uh, the, the, the pirate, the famous pirate, uh, once bounced down the, uh, the, the main road with his, his cutlass held high. Uh, lots of history there. All right, it's 29.40. Uh, here we go. Uh, toodle pip, and uh, I'll be back with, uh, with you on the radio tomorrow morning.